more Vatican suppressed ancient Anunnaki Sumerian texts, thousands of years old, older than anything in the Bible. This could be well over 6,000 years old. This could be a translation or a copy of something that predates it by 50,000 years. And that's one thing fascinating about these Sumerian texts is, especially when you read about the ones from Nibiru, you can put a date, an approximate date, on the actual tablets themselves, but to find out how far back the translations go or the copy of another translation or the copy of a scribe, when you get into the Sumerian kings list that goes back over 240,000 years, there is a lot left to speculate for speculation. Now, Inanna and Ebaha, Inanna is Ishtar, slash Easter, the wonderful holiday of running around looking for plastic eggs with Chinese chocolate inside of them. And let me tell you why I say Vatican, Vatican suppressed. Because these texts were heavily suppressed by the Vatican. And when the Vatican decided what books to put in the Holy Bible, they suppressed a lot of this information. They hid, transformed, and mis, uh, misinterpreted much of this data. A lot of the stories that you read in the Bible are actually diluted stories of Sumerian slash Anunnaki mythology. So I'm going to go ahead and read this to you guys right now because not only does this have warfare, this has Ishtar being a very narcissistic, do whatever she can, or, you know, she'll do whatever she can to get what she wants with no remorse. And Ishtar is, she reminds me of Ares, the god of war. I mean, she's pissed. And she'll do whatever it takes to get what she wants. I mean, she literally took over the throne of her, fa of her grandfather, King Anu, of the dynasty of the Anunnaki. And the last story that we read on Leak Project, she was taking over all this land and all these dynasties. And, and then her father, or I'm sorry, her grandfather said, you know, Ishtar, Inanna has become greater than myself. And she refers to Enlil as her father in this story, which I find interesting because Enki is her father in other stories. So that's, it. that's towards the end. And I'll, I'll get to that here in a few minutes. Let's go ahead and get started. Goddess of the fearsome divine powers, clad in terror, riding on the great divine powers, Inanna, made perfect by the holy Aankar, weapon drenched in blood, rushing around in great battles, with shield resting on the ground, covered in storm and flood, great lady Inanna, knowing well how to plan conflicts, you destroy mighty lands with arrow and strength, and overpower lands. In heaven and on earth, you roar like a lion and devastate the people like a huge wild bull. Bingo! You triumph over lands which are hostile. Like a fearsome lion, you pacify the insubordinate and submissive with your gall. My lady, on your acquiring the statue of heaven, Iron Maiden Inanna, on you becoming, on your becoming as magnificent as the earth on your becoming forth like Utu or on your coming forth like Utu, the king and stretching your arms wide on your walking in heaven and wearing fearsome terror on your wearing daylight and brilliance on earth on your walking in the mountain ranges and bringing forth beaming rays on your bathing the Jurin plants of the mountains in light on your giving birth to the bright mountain, the mountain, the holy place, on your blank. What do you think, Honor? On your being strong with the mace, like a joyful lord, like an enthusiastic question mark lord. On your exulting in such battle, like a destructive weapon, the black-headed people ring out in song, and all the lands sing their song sweetly. I shall praise the lady of battle, the great child of Suen, of Satan, Maiden Iron Maiden Inanna. Inanna announced, When I, the goddess, was walking around in heaven, walking around on earth, when I, Inanna, 
was walking around in heaven, walking around on earth, when I was walking around in Alam and Sabur, when I was walking around in the Lullaby Mountains, when I turned towards the center of the mountains, as I, the goddess, approached the mountain, it showed me no respect. As I, Anana, approached the mountain, it showed me no respect. As I approached the mountain range of Ebaha, it showed me no respect. Well, that's not a good idea. You know how pissed off she gets. Since they did not appropriately, on their own, initiate, or on their own initiative, since they did not put their noses to the ground for me, since they did not rub their lips in dust for me, I shall fill my hand with the soaring mountain range and let it learn fear of me. I mean, first of all, you read about some of these demons and deities that are just evil and wicked. Well, she's right up there with them. I mean, she wants them to stick their head in the sand and like, and like kiss the ground that she walks on. Literally, that's what she wants. So since they didn't appropriately, on their own initiative, put their noses to the ground and rub their lips in dust for her, this is what she does. Against its magnificent sides, I shall place magnificent battering rams. Against its small sides, I shall place small battering rams. I shall storm it and start the game of holy Iron Maiden in honor. In the mountain range, I shall start battles and prepare conflicts. I shall prepare arrows in the quiver. I shall sling stones with the rope. I shall begin the polishing of my lance. I shall prepare the throw stick and the shield. I shall set fire to its thick forests. I shall take an axe to its evil doing. Oh yeah, they're evil because they didn't stick their head in the sand for you. I shall make Jabil, the purifier, do his work at its water courses. I shall spread this terror through the inaccessible mountain range, Arata. Like a city which On has cursed, may it never be restored. Like a city at which Enlil has frowned, may it never again lift its neck up. May the mountain observe, question mark, my conduct. May Ebaha give me honor and praise me. Anana, the child of Suwen, Satan, put on the garment of royalty and girded herself in joy. She bedecked her forehead with terror and fearsome radiance. She arranged carnelian rosettes around her holy throat. She brandished the seven-headed Sita weapon vigorously to her right and placed straps of lapis lazuli on her feet. Wow, that's better than going to Nordstrom's. At dusk, she came forth regally and stood in the street at the Gate of Wonder. She made an offering to On, to on and addressed a prayer to him. On, in delight at Anana, stepped forward and took his place. He filled the seat of honor of heaven. Anana announced, On, my father, I greet you. Lend your ear to my words. On has made me terrifying throughout heaven. Owing to my own, uh, owing to you, my word has no rival in heaven or on earth. At the limits of heaven are the silic weapon, the antiball, and mansium emblems. To set the sokol in position and make the throne and foundation firm to carry the might of the Sita weapon which bends like a moving tree to hold the ground with the six-fold yoke. To extend the thighs with the fourfold yoke. Wow. Sounds interesting. What do you do again with the never mind. To pursue mur <laughs> to pursue murderous raids and widespread military campaigns to appear to those kings in the of heaven like moonlight, to shoot the arrow from the arm and fall on fields, orchards and forests like the tooth of the locust, to take the harrow to rebel lands, to remove the locks from their city gates, so the doors stand open. King On, you have indeed given me all this, and you have placed me at the right hand of the king in order to destroy rebel lands. May he, with my aid, smash heads like a falcon in the foothills of the mountain. And mind you folks, people worship Ishtar on Easter. 
Easter is an Ishtar religion. This is not pagan. This is not Christian. And if you want to think that it is representation of the resurrection of Christ, I mean, you're more than welcome to think that. That's not what Easter is at the roots. You could call it something else, like Plastic Jesus, kind of like uh, Mr. Jeff Doherty does. And he's got a great YouTube channel as well. He's been on the show before. He'll be on the show again. He's an author. And he talks about the difference between Plastic Jesus and the Christ. And it's interesting how people label different deities and entities. But when you really think about it, for example, Christmas. Somebody that I'm close to gets really upset come Christmas time if everybody that she wants to give gifts to doesn't have, like, a lot of stuff. You know, like, she spends several grand on Christmas, which is the norm. I mean, that's not anything out of the ordinary. But have you noticed how people come to expect a certain amount for Christmas? Like, if you have, I don't know, if you got kids or grandkids or, you know, you hear about your, your you know, you've got a friend that talks about his kids and how spoiled they are. It seems, you know, Christmas is a consumer-driven holiday. And think about all of the junk that you throw out the next day and all the wrapping paper and just all the consumption of Christmas alone. And even in the retail industry, Christmas alone is this huge portion of their entire yearly bottom line numbers, how much they make. Christmas is a big part of that. So, I mean, certainly I can appreciate holidays and giving gifts. I mean, that's awesome. But it takes away the point. It totally takes away the point. If anything, the holidays now, for a lot of people, cause more problems than good. Opposite of what they're supposed to do. It's not relaxing. It's, I mean, think about that. Christmas should be a day of relaxing. If you're giving thanks to the Christ, the, if you believe in Christ as your Savior, as your sole Savior, and if, if you're out, okay, well, I got to go get all these gifts Christmas Eve, and then I got to wrap them up, and then you know, then it's filled, you know, these plastic wrappings, 80% of it's junk, half the stuff you give away to the Goodwill anyway, the people you give them to, don't use them, throw them away, give them to somebody else. Where's, where's the Christ in that? So, anyway, I'm divigating. May he destroy the lands as a snake in a crevice. May he make them slither around like a Sad's cow, snake coming down from a mountain. May he establish control over the mountain, examine it, and know its length. May he go out on the holy campaign of On and know its depth. I want to surpass the other deities, since the Anuna deities have. How can it be that the mountain did not fear me in heaven and on earth? That the mountain did not fear me, Anana, in heaven and on earth? That the mountain range of Abu. The mountain did not fear me in heaven or on earth because it did not act appropriately on its own initiative because it did not put its nose to the ground because it did not rub its lips in the dust. May I fill my hand with the soaring mountain range and make it learn fear of me. Oh, yeah, I mean, that's that's just such a such a godly thing to do, isn't it? We should definitely make a holiday for this person. just pisses me off when I read about this kind of stuff. And then I, you know, I just, you, you connect the dots. Virtually everything we're told is a skewed lie. Lie. Empires of dirt, ladies and gentlemen. You could have it all. My empires of dirt. I will let you down. I will make you hurt. That's what it is. Look at Look at people today that, so, that sell their souls, the freaking devil. Whatever that devil is, whatever that deity is, they literally sign contracts in blood for fame, physical fame. This is not even a blip in the overall scheme of things. Like I talked about before, infinity, infinite life, the spark of infinity. Say, oh, I'll give you fame for 100 years. You want to make a trade? Does that... Are you serious? No, absolutely not. I'll give you fame for 10 lifetimes. What do you say? Sign right here. You want to buy a timeshare too? This is spooky. 
And then how far does it go? And are there really enough rules in play to keep balance for like, do they really have to follow certain universal rules, these serpent archons, or have they gotten to the point to where now they feel like they can cheat the system? Or is it very similar to the description Ares gives in the Wonder Woman film, which just came out, which by the way, isn't that a beautiful painting of Wonder Woman? Hello, she's looking good. Um, and she's badass, and she's a demigod, and she's good, you know, like fighting for goodness and for for people. She fights for the people. She fights for the little people. She fights for us. Well, she's still badass. And she's got the Anunnaki star on the crown, as you can see. But once again, I'm divagating. So let's go back. Sorry. Here we go. Like a city which on had cursed, may it never be restored. Like a city at which Enlil has frowned, may it never again lift its neck up. May the mountain observe my conduct. May Ebaha give me honor and praise me. On the king of the deities answered her. My little one demands the destruction of this mountain. What is she taking on? Anana demands the destruction of this mountain. What is she taking on? She demands the destruction of this mountain. What has she taken on? Why do you keep asking the same question, man? It's because I think it's a song. It has poured fearsome terror on the abodes of the gods. It has spread fear among the holy dwellings of the Anuna deities. Its fearsomeness is terrible and weighs upon the land. The mountain range's radiance is terrible and weighs upon all the lands. Its arrogance extends grandly to the center of heaven. Fruit hangs in its flourishing gardens, and luxuriance spreads forth. Its magnificence, its magnificent trees, a crown in the heavens, stand as a wonder to behold in Ebaha. Lions are abundant under the canopy of trees and bright branches. It makes wild rams and stags freely abundant. It stands wild bulls, hello, in flourishing grass. Deer couple among the cypress trees of the mountain range. Its fearsomeness is terrible. You cannot pass through. The mountain range's radiance is terrible. Iron Maiden, Anana! You cannot oppose it. Thus he spoke. The mistress, in her rage and anger, opened the arsenal and pushed on the lapis lizzily gate. She brought out magnificent battle and called up a great storm. Holy Anana reached for the quiver, she raised a towering flood with evil silt. She stirred up an evil raging wind with pot sherds. With pots herds. Looks like it says with pot heads. My lady confronted the mountain range. She advanced step by step. She sharpened both edges of their dagger. She grabbed Ebaha's neck as if ripping up a Sparto grass. She pressed the dagger's teeth into its interior. She roared like thunder. I wonder if that's what she does. Well, <laughs> you know, the rocks forming. Like, she's getting off on this, right? It's creepy, man. She's enjoying it a little too much. The rocks forming the body of Ebaha clattered down its flanks. From its sides and crevices, great serpents spat venom. Hmm. She damned its forests and cursed its trees. She killed its oak trees with drought. Sounds like weather manipulation. She poured fire on its flanks and made it smoke dense. The goddess established authority over the mountain. Holy Inanna did as she wished. You don't mess with this tar, man. She went to the mountain range of Ebaha and addressed it. Mountain range. Because of your elevation, because of your height, because of your attractiveness, because of your beauty, because if you're wearing a holy garment, because if you're reaching up to heaven, because you did not put your nose to the ground, because you did not rub your lips in the dust, I have killed you and brought you low. Easter! Happy Easter, everybody! Timeshare! As with an elephant, I have seized your tusks. As with a great wild bull, I have brought you to the ground by your thick horns. As with a bull, I have forced your great strength to the ground and pursued you savagely. I have made tears the norm in your eyes. I have placed laments in your heart.
birds of sorrow are building nests on these flanks for a second time rejoicing in fearsome terror. She spoke out righteously, my father Enlil. See, that's what I told you earlier. She says her father's Enlil this time. So what am I missing here? My father Enlil has poured my great terror over the center of the mountains. On my right side, he has placed a weapon. On my left side, uh, is placed. Ooh, what does she have on her left side? My anger is a harrow with great teeth, has torn the mountain apart. I have built a palace and done much more. I have put a throne in place and made its foundation firm. I have given the Kurjara cult performers a dagger and prod. I have given the Gala cult performers Oob and Lilith drums. I have transformed the Polipoli cult performers. In my victory, I rushed towards the mountain. In my victory, I rushed towards Ebaha, the mountain range. I went forward like a surging flood and like rising water. I overflowed the dam. I imposed my victory on the mountain. I imposed my victory on Ebaha. For destroying Ebaha, great child of Suen, Satan, Iron Maiden, Inanna, be praised. Nisaba, be praised. So that's what you're going to praise? That's Christ-like to you? That's worshiping the resurrection of Jesus. Ishtar, Inanna, Easter, Okay. Happy Easter, everybody. Question everything. And also, once again, just want to give a huge shout out. Brady did an amazing job on this artwork. As you can see right here, you've got Darth Vader, Wonder Woman, and Stranger Things. You've seen my podcast. If you haven't seen my podcast on Stranger Things, I've done multiple shows with an analysis. One of my favorite series of all time. I even have the soundtrack. The music is great. And she just did an incredible job putting that together. I mean, the detail is immaculate. And with more light, you could see it better. I worked out a deal with Brady. And I'm going to leave a link in the video description box. I worked out a deal with her where if you purchase from her and she does logos she does custom designs she'll do just about anything i mean as you can see her talent is impeccable and because she's not super well known yet you can get one of these things for a few hundred dollars her prices range anywhere from five to eight hundred bucks and you know she can get into stuff even more expensive than that but that's usually what the prices go for and that'll get you a three foot by four foot one of a kind piece of art or you can have something that's not one of a kind. But as you can see, these pieces behind me, these are one of a kind. These are ones that she did, and now they're on my wall. I think they're amazing. I mean, it really adds to the energy level in this room. And I think it's fascinating because when I went over and talked to her today, I actually interviewed her, and I'm going to be uploading that here shortly. She showed me multiple photos, or not multiple photos, but multiple drawings that she has done. And Stranger Things was like right there. I was like, wow, so she's got Stranger Things. She's a big fan of H.R. Giger, and her son is extremely talented. Um, he played a couple of songs that he actually he wrote himself and played the guitar himself. Just awesome. I mean, super talented uh, people, and I will leave the links in the video description box. Make sure to use the code Leak Project so you can get a 30% discount. And you will be just absolutely blown away with the quality of her work. And and let me let me move this here real quick. Look at Wonder Woman right there. Na -na 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 -na. Isn't that awesome? So anyway, super cool. And I'm gonna have her make a custom piece for me that's gonna be a combination of Dr. Manhattan with an H.R. Giger style to it, and incorporate the Leak Project logo. So how cool is that? And what would you want? If you could have your own painting, you know, something of this caliber, what would you want it to be of? I'd love to hear your comments in the comment section. Would you want a Marvel character? Would you want it to be you as a, as a Marvel character? Would it be, like, do you have a business and you've got a really cool logo that you would want to see incorporated into something? Would you want it to be, like, an Anunnaki? Would you want it to be a, uh, I don't know, some type of techno Godzilla monster or something? I mean, what would you pick? I'm really excited to see what you're going to come up with. And I know both 
guys and gals are going to have some great ideas. So I can't wait to hear what you have to say. Thank you for being here with me. Much appreciated. Please leave your comments in the comment section about what you think of this uh, Sumerian text here. What's your take on it? And doesn't it kind of freak you out a little bit when you really find out that Easter, you know, this, this major national holiday that some people look at as being just as important as Christmas, and then, you know, the date of Christmas, we need to find out what kind of stuff used to go down on December 25th, like what kind of rituals and, and just dark stuff went down on December 25th. Because if Marduk represents Ra, and Ra, December 25th, represent like the birthday of Ra, based upon something to do with the sun and the astrological alignment, I'm just putting bits and pieces here together, folks, so help me out here. If Marduk is Ra, and what we're discussing here kind of all comes together, then that puts into perspective a whole other aspect of what we've been taught. December 25th, Christmas, being Jesus' birthday. When, you know, if Jesus, the Christ, is as the Gnostics describe him, as a healer, and as many people look at him as a healer, then I'm sure the last day he would want his birthday to be, um, you know, what's the word I'm looking for here? You don't want to celebrate somebody's birthday that has the opposite representation of how they, you know, how they think. So what's his real birthday? And what's Jesus's real story? Yahshua's real story. And that just kind of makes me think, as I've talked to you about before, if you, if you ever cast a spell and you want to cast a um, you know, spell of healing, you probably don't want to do it on the day of Mars, which is the day of war. You're probably going to pick a day like, like Venus or Jupiter, you know, which would be Thursday and Friday. Uh, Jupiter is Thursday and Venus is Friday. Mars is... Man, it's been a while, so I'm going to have to look into this again. I think Mars is Tuesday, Mercury is Monday... Obviously, Saturday is Saturn. Sunday is the sun. M Monday's the moon. Monday's the moon. So Tuesday would be Mars. There we go. Nanu, nanu, nanu. Thursday's Jupiter. Friday's Venus. And then Wednesday would be Mercury, I guess. But that doesn't sound right. I'll have to double check on that. Don't quote me on that, ladies and gentlemen. I am divagating from the topic. Just wanted to share that two cents with you. And hopefully you can get a cup of coffee with it someday. Maybe. All right, guys. Thank you. Have a beautiful day. Be the change you want to see. LeakProject.com.